Hi, um, I'm Lisa Cardi, and um, I'm going to spend the next 10 minutes or so um, telling you about um, my involvement um, with Micropast so far. Here's some um, one or two facts about me. Um, I did study archaeology a very, very long time ago. I've got a degree in archaeological science. And um, after I graduated, and after a few unsuccessful attempts at securing um, postgraduate or um, employment positions, I think I probably panicked slightly, and I went off and uh, did an um, MSc in information science, which kind of makes me a librarian with a computer, or it did then. Um, um, but I, I always had the intention of going back and working in an archive or a library which had uh, an archaeology um, focus, but that hasn't happened so far. And, and then about a couple of years ago, I decided I was going to do something about this, and I really wanted to get back into an institution or an organisation which had archaeology or at least heritage um, as one of its, as its sort of main subject area. But I didn't want to completely abandon everything I'd learnt um, so far with libraries and archives, particularly everything, my experience with um, managing um, digital collections. So what I was really looking for was a project that I could volunteer with, and I, I, I work part-time, um, so I had some time, but not lots and lots of time. I wanted um, a project that I could um, get involved in, which had archaeology, but also digital. And I, I wanted that for my CV. I wanted to beef up my CV so I could get myself in a situation where I could start applying for jobs that I actually wanted to do, and I was interested in, in the collections. So, having made that decision, um, the first thing, I, I main thing that I attended was the very promising entitled um, Digital Engagement in Archaeology Conference, which is at UCL, um, Institute of Archaeology. And that's an um, image, a photograph of, um, of the conference. And I think I can see the back of my head somewhere, but I was definitely, definitely there. And, um, and then having attended that conference, I started following a couple of the main contributors, uh, namely Chiara and uh, Daniel Pett, um, as a result. So when the Micropasts project was launched, um, I um, found out about it via Twitter. I went off and signed up to the Micropasts um, site um, as a contributor, and I got involved doing a few of the web-based apps, transcribing some of the British Museum's index cards and uh, drawing the photo masks, um, the, uh, yeah, creating photo masks. But in order to you know, do what I was intending to do, which was get some um, sort of extra archaeology brownie points for my CV, I realised I had to do a little bit more than drawing around Bronze Age axes. Um, so I got in touch with the Micropass team. Um, and um, as you've also discovered, um, he also was one of those people that wanted to do a little bit more than the web-based application. So there are other contributors who wanted to do more. And um, Chiara came back and offered me a couple of um, possible projects that I could get involved in. And I decided to um, opt for the 3D modeling, building the 3D models, um, which involved me learning how to use a software package called Photoscan. And the 3D models are the next step in the process after um, the photo masks have been created. And rather sort of redundantly, here's a 2D um, representation of one of the 3D models that I've created. Uh, but hopefully it's enough to whet your appetite to go and um, have a look at the rest of them on the um, Sketchfab uh, website, if you haven't done already. And I think, um, I think I've done about three or four of these now, something like that. OK, so what do I think is good about Micropast so far? Well, overall, the whole project, um, well, it's web-based. So there's 24-7 access. You don't have to um, go anywhere. You can sit at your own computer uh, and, um, and, and um, carry out any of the projects that are available. Um, it's democratic and open. Anyone can become a Micropast contributor and um, by um, transcribing the index cards or um, creating the photo masks, anyone is then creating research data. And along with that, and probably almost more importantly, maybe, is that the data, the research data that's generated by the Micropass contributors is open. It's open research data. And having been a librarian in a university uh, for quite a long time now, I'm very much of the opinion that the best kind of research data is um, open data. What else is good about it? There's lots of support. Um, there are online tutorials that talk people through um, the web-based applications, how to draw a photo mask, and probably more importantly, not how to do it, but why it's important, uh, what, what the outcomes are of people's um, activities. 
Um, there are also on, there's also uh, an online forum where people can post queries and get responses back from experts. You know, you're rubbing shoulders with people from UCL's Institute of Archaeology and the British Museum. Um, but also, um, and I think this helps in terms of creating a, a community at Micropasts, is all the contributors get a name check. Um, so there's, um, you know, you, you get rewarded um, for your, for your um, efforts. More challenging things? Um, well, certainly for some of us, um, learning how to use the Photoscan software distance, you know, from a distance, uh, was certainly a bit of a steep learning curve to start with. Um, but that's to be expected with um, a very sort of um, technical um, piece of software. And um, it was great being able to post um, queries about issues that people were having about um, using this um, photo scan software at, at the forum. And um, the feedback that um, we all got was great. And I think we all got there in the end. And I think it's over 50, over 50 Bronze Age at least. Yeah, um, um, 3D uh, models that are um, available um, for you to look at. OK, so looking to the future, what kind of things could be um, improved upon? Um, well, given that um, a number of us had, uh, and there was only a small um, group of people who were actually creating the 3D models, um, one possible thing that um, could be um, developed which would support the, the text-based tutorial about how to work through Photoscan and create um, 3D models would be a sort of like little um, instructable or a sort of YouTube-type um, clip, um, very kind of visual, lots of um, audio as well. So, showing people and telling people about particular issues that they might have when creating 3D models and then how to, um, you know, how to um, go back and, and um, do things differently so that um, the models are improved. Um, something that I'm sure is an issue for all crowdsourced um, projects, not just micropasts, is at some point you, it's probably a good idea to demonstrate the value of the project. Um, who benefits, which individuals benefit, which organisations benefit, um, or which um, particular groups or disciplines benefit from your particular project. And um, I think um, Chiara has, um, might have talked about that earlier on today. I'm sorry, I'd only got here at lunchtime. Um, but I know that uh, it's something that the Micropass team are working on, so I'm sure there'll be some more information about demonstrating the value of Micropasts available soon. And again, something that I'm sure is um, true for all um, uh, crowdsourced projects, again, is that it's all very exciting when, you're, um, when your platform is first launched and there's lots of activity and everyone comes along, gets involved, but then uh, inevitably people come a little bit jaded and not doesn't help the fact that uh, the web is a great place for launching even new, shinier um, new projects so that people are distracted. Um, so... Um, there, um, there's going to be pressure on micropasts to uh, maintain the momentum that it's, um, it's gathered so far and keep rolling out and, and reaching, new uh, reaching new audiences. Um, but back to me again. Um, what have I got out of it so far? Well, I've got new skills. I now know how to use um, um, Photoscan. I've got experiences of being involved in a crowdsourced project um, about archaeology, which was what I, which I set out to do. Um, my CV is looking a lot better, um, and um, I've got experience, and um, in, I, you know, I can demonstrate that I'm not only just interested in archaeology, but I'm actively actively involved in um, projects around archaeology, um, and so that's given me a confidence to apply for posts that I probably wouldn't have done a few months ago. And probably most importantly is I'm, I'm getting involved with archaeology again, which is um, much more um, interesting than uh, working in social science library, uh, which is what I do the other half of the week. Um, and um, one, another thing that's benefited is my social media presence, um, my tweets, there's more of them, and uh, they're all about archaeology um, and um, the micropasts project and I also wrote uh, a, blog, a blog post for the Micropast site which is basically an expanded version of what I've spent the last 10 minutes or so talking about and um, do potential employers look at things like Twitter feeds and blog posts? Well I think they probably do actually and if they don't I'm sure they will start to increasingly so um, yeah that's something else that um, has worked out well for me. 
And that was everything from me. So thank you very much for listening. If anybody's got any questions, there's my email address and also um, my Twitter um, account name thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.